Hello, this is Movie Night Movie Review, and tonight's movie is Phase 4, an interesting sci-fi movie for you tonight. Phase 4 is from 1974, a Saul Bass movie, and my understanding this is his uh, one and only movie. The movie stars Nigel Davenport, Lynn Frederick, and Michael Murphy. The movie is available on DVD, and it's also available on Blu-ray, which I have a copy, and it looks wonderful. They did a marvelous transfer for this movie, so it is terrific if you watch it on Blu-ray. The basic plot is the movie begins with a strange uh, solar phenomenon of some kind. Uh, it's not real clear what's going on or what actually is happening exactly. Based on the movie, it's a little bit abstract at the beginning. Uh, it's not real clear. It seems to be some sort of solar flare thing or something bizarre with the alignment of planets and the sun, something like that. It, it never really explains itself, but what actually happens is interesting. It does something to only one thing on Earth, and it is to ants. Somehow, by some means, the ants are suddenly uh, very intelligent and seem to be very purpose-driven now and it seems to be towards some sort of conquest of the earth and this is where the story picks up now I, as i stated earlier the movie does star nigel davenport who does a, a marvelous job in this movie and uh, michael murphy who's a very very versatile experienced actor has popped up in quite a lot of things over the years but the movie also stars lynn frederick a uh, very, very uh, cute and attractive uh, actress. Uh, always played sort of the girl next door kind of parts. Uh, she died way too young. She was only 39, and uh, the cause of her death, I, I believe, is still open. Yeah, well, they don't know wh why she died. But uh, she was married quite a lot, and uh, one of her notable marriages, I think it was her final one, was to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I had to clear my throat for a minute, was to Peter Sellers. Had a little frog in my throat there. Uh, yes, Lynn, I'm glad you agree. <laughs> but one one place uh, Lynn Frederick uh, popped up in was in one of my favorite TV shows of all time. It was Space 1999, and she only appeared in one episode. But uh, I wish she would have become more of a cast member there. But uh, she had a one memorable episode. It was really goofy, wacky kind of episode. A lot of those, a lot of those were. But uh, she did pop up in that show and uh, did a, a wonderful job in that, that episode. And if you haven't seen Space 1999, you should uh, give that series a, a look. Uh, I don't think you'll regret it. It's really very well done, very ni nicely done. Had a cool atmosphere of its own. But I don't want to go on about that. Let's, let's get back to the movie. Now, this, there's a science team that's sent out to uh, investigate these ants and to see what they can uh, come up with. Uh, Michael Murphy plays uh, James, and Nigel uh, Davenport plays Dr. Hubs. They are uh, set up in this nice little compound here that you can see, and uh, they have all kinds of computers and the latest things. And the movie, uh, if you read uh, some bio on the movie, uh, they actually use real computers and equipment in this movie. They weren't just fake, you know, sets or nothing like that. So just to add realism to the movie, they, did, they, did, they went to that much effort. Now, James and Dr. Hubbs quickly discover these ants are quite intelligent. They even build these interesting uh, monoliths that they climb to the top of and observe the area with, I, I guess. I don't know. They never really explained the purpose of these, but uh, it's beyond even the scientist. One thing I like about this movie is if you're a fan of the Andromeda strain, you're going to find a lot of similarities in this movie. Uh, but they're all good, and the movie's still unique enough on its own that it's it's it does its own thing. So it's don't worry about that. Now the two scientists do discover a family that was looks like they were totally you know, killed by the uh, the ants, the marching maniacal ants. And uh, however, hiding in the cellar is Kendra, played by uh, Lynn Frederick, who's the daughter of the family, and they were able to uh, rescue her and bring her back to the science compound. Now, the reason I bring up this moment is uh, there's an interesting moment here. I don't know what this is. It's a little weird, 
but uh, they have to bring her into a decontamination room, and for some reason, uh, they're all buck naked. And I, th I th just found this really odd. I'm trying to sit back, kind of laughing about it a little bit. I'm trying to think how these two older, creepy guys got her to take all her clothes off and go into this room with them. And I'm just trying to imagine that, that conversation. I wish they would have showed that in the movie. <laughs> so. Yes, I'm trying to imagine why they uh, couldn't have gone in one at a time, or the two guys going first, or send her in first, they come in last, but, you know, I, I don't know. So, yes, the answer proving to be a difficult challenge for these brilliant scientists, and um, not easily uh, dissuade. Um, they've tried different uh, chemicals on them in the movie that they call by their color name. They'll say, we use blue or we use yellow, or we use green, and the ants are able to adapt each time to this. The queen is able to give birth to uh, ants that are particularly resistant to whatever they, they throw at them, so so it's not easy. Now, to, the, to their credit, the scientists are able to uh, discover a way to communicate with the ants and through some sort of electrical impulse, and it's read through the computers through symbolism that they have to try and decipher which is a nightmare to just to try and decipher it. And uh, it's discovered that the ants seem to be focusing in on one person in this compound, but they don't know who. So, But apparently the ants are just focused, laser focused on one person in this compound. Now to uh, add to their woes, the ants actually uh, st strike back at them for trying to destroy them by creating these interesting these uh, interesting structures which have, which have specific geometry to them and reflective tiny materials that will actually reflect sunlight back at the compound thus heating it up so that it, it burns them out of there which is incredible that the ants were able to do this and figure this out. Now while this is going on poor uh, Kendra, Lynn Frederick, is uh, starting to think that she's the one they want, that it's all her fault, and that if uh, she rationalizes in her young mind that, uh, you know, if, if, if she just surrenders to the ants and goes out there, that they would be okay. Now, Dr. Hobbs, uh, at this point in the movie, is not well. He was bitten by one of the ants and has developed quite a swollen arm and is just not well. Uh, the ants seem to be getting the best of him, and he's quite a stubborn uh, individual and prideful and believes that, you know, we have to show the ants that man cannot be beaten. We have to show them that man will not give in, is a quote from him. Now, Kendra takes it upon herself one night to just go ahead and go out and venture out barefoot, too, on top of it, out of the compound, and go ahead and face the ants, and then we never see her at that point again. And Dr. Hobbs, he later follows and decides to take on the queen himself and ventures out and meets with uh, unfortunate uh, results for him, which I don't want to give away. You go to watch a movie. Now, Michael Murphy, James, is the only character left now and decides that uh, Dr. Hobbs may have been right all along that it's the queen. Uh, as Dr. Hobbs put it, uh, it's the queen. Sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> it just, it's a really dramatic scene, and uh, I, I don't know, it just stuck with me. Now, I don't want to give away the whole entire movie and the end, especially, but uh, I will say one thing. Uh, I'm starting to wonder in reflection now of this movie whether or not Star Trek The Motion Picture didn't rip off their ending from this movie, actually, because I, I checked the dates. Uh, phase 4 is many years before Star Trek The Motion Picture, and the ending to, of this movie, and I just don't want to give it away to you in case you watch it, but uh, it's very much very similar. I mean, it's weird how similar this the end of this movie is so they they may have uh, really had something here that uh, star trek copied it now one thing i did want to say before we go is that uh first of all the filming in this movie is just unbelievable ken middleham uh does the ant i don't know what, what else you call it. it's like ant level fi filming with close-ups of the ants that's just so incredible i don't know how they how they even did this this must have took longer than the whole movie took just to film the sequences with the ants 
brilliant, uh, just wonderful to watch. Uh, never get bored seeing it. Uh, Ken Middleham is uh, he's he's done uh, other work too that's very notable. So I wanted to say some about that. And then the uh, the music in this movie is very striking, and uh, I think I, I call it like ant music because it's perfect for the movie. Um, it just works really well. This is also, I just want to mention too, this is also the first movie ever to show a crop circle, <laughs> which was actually formed by the ants in this movie, so that's uh, something notable about this movie. Another thing too about Lynn Frederick is uh, one little tidbit I found out is that uh, they were, were a little worried about her figure because she didn't quite look like a 16-year-old anymore. Uh... So they had to make her wear a uh, corset to bind up her chest. So when you see her in this movie, she's actually wearing quite apparently an uncomfortable corset to try and flatten her chest a little bit, just to make her look more age appropriate, I guess. So uh, just a little tidbit I wanted to add to that. So just in closing, I would like to say that uh, I recommend this movie highly. It's part of my permanent collection watch it from time to time it's an enjoyable movie to watch uh i've seen this i think my first exposure to this movie was on a local show we used to have in the area here uh that would show uh old classic uh forgotten movies and uh they would show late at night and this was sort of a regular movie that they would show and that was my first exposure to this movie and i've never forgot it and i'm glad i have it in my permanent collection and i recommend it and please try and see this movie at least once.